Welcome back, friends. Matt with Eddie's Guitars coming to you, as always, from St. Louis, Missouri. And um, we are taking a look at some absolutely incredible guitars. Uh, we appreciate you joining us midweek here. What do we have here? Is it Thursday? Uh, a day or two early from our norm, but we're going to be uh, off tomorrow and Saturday. So those days were not an option. Uh, I was not going to wait until next week or beyond to touch on some of the recent arrival guitars that have come in the shop. Uh, over the course of the past week or so here, and um, we've got some crazy, crazy nice guitars to share with you folks today. Um, some very special instruments that we've been very involved in the build process in some cases, and um, just a lot of really good stuff. I think about the strongest possible way that we could sort of end out the year here with our last live stream for 2021. The first guitar that I'm holding on my lap here is from our friends at Santa Cruz Guitar Company. This is a Style 1. Uh, this is a 12 fret single O body, so a rather petite and uh, I will tell you a lightweight guitar, very comfortable guitar to sit and play. Uh, the, the 12 fret aspect of this guitar kind of shifts the neck inward towards the, the player a little bit there. Makes for a very, you know, just short and comfortable reach playing it. And um, you can hear in the voice, it's, it's just instantaneously responsive to, to whatever your right hand is feeding into it. And certainly part of that is the shape and size of the guitar and, and just the build style. The other big contributing factor are the tone woods on this guitar. And the top on this guitar, let's, uh, let's take a look at this if you don't mind there, Hondra. Top on this guitar is a beautiful set of Tunnel 13 Redwood. Gorgeous top here. A lot of dimension in that in that redwood there. You can see the beautiful grain, how defined it is. Very nice color, nice glow there. Back and sides of this guitar are an incredible set of highly figured walnut. Just gorgeous stuff. Beautiful color, beautiful figure. Uh, great book match on this too. Just just a really thorough match on on this. Uh, if you look closely there, and we'll see if we can show you closely, the body binding on this guitar is the same matching walnut uh, for the body binding. You can see the purfling is rather minimal. Those are just thin black strips uh, separating that binding from the rest of the body panels of that guitar. Real simple purfling on the top of the guitar as well. You can see that abalone rosette adding a bit of color around the sound hole and a very thin black back strip matching all that simple uh, thin black purfling around the binding in the body of this guitar. It's beautiful, beautiful stuff here. Um, this is actually one of four guitars that we have coming to us, two of which are here, this, this and another, that we're also going to take a look at here shortly that all have the exact same wood combination. They all have the exact same aesthetic treatment in terms of bindings, inlays, all of that stuff. Um, all four guitars, though, are uh, different body shapes and sizes, I should say. Uh, this guitar, again, being the style one or the single O 12 fret, we're gonna take a look at a double O shortly here. And still in production, we don't have these in-house yet, but still in production, we also have a PJ made just like this, so their parlor guitar, as well as the Firefly model. And these um, Tunnel 13 Redwood sets represent the last Tunnel 13 Redwood sets that uh, Santa Cruz has on hand right now. So, um, very, very impressive sounding stuff, though. And again, this guitar is so light and so instantaneously responsive. A nice bright sound with those kind of punchy mids in there. Great sustain. Listen to that all day. A 
Folks, as always, if you're uh, if you're joining us live here, we certainly really appreciate it, and uh, we encourage you to not be shy nor be quiet. We'd love to hear from you, hear where you're tuning in from. Um, we are uh, what is this Christmas Eve Eve? So tell us what you what you might be up to. Um, you know all that good stuff. We gotta got some stuff coming up. So yeah, yeah, we've got some of the normal players in the chat. James Floyd, nice Roweth. Nice. Jim Bailey. Jim, good to have you. Thanks for joining us. Deja Voodoo, James Bertel, Mindy spying a stocking back there. <laughs> uh, James, um, thank you for being with us. If um, Ask James, I'm asking James for us, if, if I can let folks know who he is, <laughs> especially folks local to St. Louis here. We will await his response. If not, no problem. But Oh, yeah. James um, James is a is a good guy with a very fascinating gig. I'll just say that. And of course, uh, Klaus Lawrence from Bavaria. Nice. Klaus, in. appreciate you joining us. Uh, outside of our local time zone here, for <laughs> sure, he's he's a ways off. Oh yeah. <laughs> And folks, I'm, I'm not going to make any um, illusions about it. We've got a number of guitars to work through today, so we are not going to linger incredibly long on any one piece. Uh, of course, if, um, if we get past something and you think, i got to hear more of that, we, we can do all that later. So we will uh, just, just put that out there. James says, ha sure, let's go blues. <laughs> awesome. So James... Um, I assume that's his blessing that I can share share his gig. James is um, one of the folks uh, who has the honor of of playing oftentimes the national anthem at the St. Louis Blues games here in St. Louis. Obviously, um, he uh, he actually reached out to me. Oh, it's been what a couple months ago, I guess now, James. And uh, we still need to get you in the shop here. Come 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 in here and and check us out, but. He shared with me that he is the uh, the guitarist and singer that uh, does a lot of the national anthem work here for the St. Louis Blues. I've seen him on TV. I've I've heard him a number of times. Um, he he does an incredible job, and they do some really cool recordings of him actually in uh, the um, the Enterprise Center there, where the Blues play. So just a really really cool gig as a uh, as a guitar geek. So appreciate you letting us share that, James. And also let me know how I can get on that program. <laughs> if it requires singing, I'm probably out of luck. Oof. Folks, um, speaking of recent arrivals, this is perhaps the most recent arrival that we've had in the shop in terms of high-end acoustics. Just today we had two wonderful bourgeois guitar uh, guitars come in and I thought we absolutely have to add both of these to the live stream uh, as they are both new arrivals and both very very worth hearing and this guitar is an OMS large sound hull so this is Dana's 12 fret orchestra model has of course the uh, traditional slotted headstock there we're going to take a look at this top Hondro We've got a torified or otherwise known as age tone Adirondack spruce top on this beauty. You can see that that beautiful golden torrefaction color to that red spruce. Very nice grain on this one as well. And again, that large sound hole design, you can see the, uh, the fingerboard extension there actually um, goes into the sound hole just a little bit because of the diameter of the sound hole. Uh, this obviously, or maybe is not so obvious, but it is indeed sort of a nod to the Clarence White or Tony Rice guitar, uh, the, the 1935 D28 that had some modifications and had the sound hole enlarged there. This is very much a nod to that. The back and sides on this guitar are an incredible set of Madagascar rosewood. Nice straight grain, beautiful stuff there. Just gorgeous color and gorgeous grain orientation. Even the sides are nice and tight grain. Almost looks like a, a rich stained mahogany. It's so so tight in, in the grain orientation there. That's really beautiful stuff. I'll tell you, this guitar has a tremendous amount of horsepower uh, just, just in the build style that it, that it has. It's got that 
that real kind of mid-range, that punchy mid-range forward sound. Throaty kind of a sound to a little bit of growl there. A voice that just makes you want to play a G run. <laughs> Known around Eddie's guitars as a Griff run. Griff run. Man, real lively, very dynamic sound. Loud. This guitar has some of the kind of standard uh, appointments for a, uh, a vintage model from, uh, from Bourgeois. We've got the grained ivroid uh, body and neck binding. No binding around the headstock, though, on this. Of course, you can see that beautiful herringbone going around the, um, the perimeter of the top there. And again, no fingerboard inlays. This is the kind of the way that the, um, the Clarence White D28 was built, again, all a bunch of nods to the large sound hole kind of design and style that that original guitar had. I like that this guitar has no logo up on the headstock. That's in fact, let's let's take a quick gander at that, Hondra. Just a very nice Madagascar rosewood veneer, timeless, effortless, uh, sophisticated, just very very smart looking headstock, and and sharp, very sharp indeed. Great long sustain to it as well. That's a great sound. I know a local guy that would like this guitar an awful lot. But alas, we shall move on, folks. Another guitar, uh, what did this just come in yesterday, I think, Andro? Yeah, pretty yesterday. sure. Oof. Yikes. sits in the tone spectrum of a, almost a baritone guitar, even though it's not tuned down. So deep. Folks, this is a, um, a Loudon O22, O standing for original series, um, meaning the shape of the body. This is um, actually the earliest of George Loudon's body designs, the O model. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a hefty guitar. You can see it's got a fairly tight waist here, but it's a big old lower bout, and, and it's a deep, deep guitar all the way from the, um, the neck block all the way down to the heel block here. It's got some good depth to it, and I'll tell you, it, the thing just absolutely screams. Uh, very loud, very powerful, lots of dynamic range to it. This is a, uh, let's take a look at this top here. This is a Western Red Cedar top here. You can see that kind of softer, uh, kind of semi-gloss or, or satin finish with that, along with that clear pick guard. I'm, I'm looking at this mirrored, folks. For, forgive me. Kind of a clear pick guard there on the top of the guitar. Pinless bridge, of course. 
uh, Western Red Cedar on the top, and we've got American ho- uh, Mahogany on the back and sides of this guitar. Beautiful quarter sawn, straight grain wood here. Nothing to complain about at all. Great looking mahogany. We did a little bit wider than standard um, neck dimensions on this guitar. This is this guitar has what is referred to as the 45 slash 60 neck, meaning the nut width down here is 45 millimeters. The spacing down here at the bridge is 60 millimeters. So this is wider than the standard uh, from Loudon. I got to tell you that it, it just feels. I haven't played a whole lot of the, this this wider format from Loudon, but I'll tell you if uh, if I were going to get one, I would definitely get this setup because it feels awesome. Nice, uh, plenty of space down here to do the finger style stuff. And, and like I said, just a little bit of extra room up here to do some of those, you know, your those big chords that you want some of those open strings ringing, you know, alongside fretted strings. Admittedly, when I was tuning this guitar up, I, th- I think I only was playing it with fingers, but after hearing how how responsive it is to the bare finger stuff and then hearing it with a with a rather thick flat pick here. versatility than you would think out of a, a fairly big guitar like this, especially a you know western red cedar you wouldn't think would necessarily have that much headroom, but I guess just the, the build style and again the extra kind of airspace inside the body of this guitar just really accommodates all that. That's a absolutely fabulous sound, real articulate, super clear. Very nice. Beautiful loud. And again, this is the 022 cutaway. The Western Red Cedar top and the mahogany back and sides. Great sound of loud and guitar. We've got a choir of well wishing for Christmas and holidays oh, for us. Awesome. Thank you folks so much. We sure appreciate that. We've uh <laughs> frankly been living in a little bit of a bubble here at the shop just with how how kind of hectic things have been around here the, the past few weeks but which which we're very grateful for don't misunderstand me um i i keep having to remind myself boy christmas eve is tomorrow um and i've gotten absolutely nothing accomplished so <laughs> leave it leave it to me so Folks, if you've been uh, with us for the duration so far, we're just a few guitars in. Um, I, I mentioned uh, just a little bit earlier when we were taking a look at the first Santa Cruz style one that we had a double O that was virtually identical other than the fact that it's a little bit larger double O guitar. And this is that very guitar here. Again, this guitar shares the exact same specs other than 
the body shape and size. Uh, again, let's, let's take a look at, at this particular set of Tunnel 13 Redwood on this guitar. Another beautiful example here. I, I, sh I should mention with more clarity um, that these four guitars were specced by uh, Mr. Richard Hoover because um, they're at the very, very end of their stash of Tunnel 13 Redwood. And, and quite honestly, thanks due in part, largely in part to us, <laughs> Eddie's guitars, meaning us. Um, we've specced a lot of guitars with this incredible Redwood with them. Uh, you might recall some of the, the tree back inside guitars that we've had here in the shop uh, with these tops as well as some of the Brazilian examples. So getting down to the end of their stash of this wood, um, Richard knew they only had, or they had some sets that were only large enough to do smaller body guitars. You know, not every single set of wood comes out, you know, exactly the same size and shape and all that stuff. So some of these sets were just physically small planks of wood that would only build a small guitar. So he took it upon himself to pair these tops with these old, highly figured walnut back and sides in, in these four small body contexts here. Again, two of which we have in the shop right now, two of which are currently in production with Santa Cruz and should be on their way probably early, early 2022. So. And I gotta say that just the way these woods play in this size guitar are, man, it's, that is, that's, Tough stuff to beat right here. sound. I, I don't expect this guitar to have an overabundance of headroom, but hey, we're here, so we're gonna we're gonna try a pick with it. Strum's pretty darn good, if you ask me. Handles all the rhythm I'd ever be able to give it, that's for sure.
redwood and walnut is a is I talked last week about the you know alternative tone woods and I, th I think redwood over walnut is a great alternative tone wood combination and you know that small body context uh, I, I I see what Richard was I think envisioning <laughs> when he paired this redwood with this walnut for these small bodies as just great use of both of these woods beautiful sound awesome very nice someone asked if that's a laminate asked if it was a laminate yeah <laughs> what channel do they think they're watching <laughs> no i'm just joking uh, All none, solid woods here, folks. N none of the guitars behind me are, are laminated um, anything. All solid woods, tops, backs, sides. There are some very, very high-end builders, both in the steel string world as well as the nylon string classical world, that will uh, double or sometimes um, you know, laminate sides to make the sides of their guitars extremely stiff. Uh, none of these guitars are built that way, though. These are all solid planks of wood all the way around. Talk about an embarrassment of, of riches behind me. Jeez, every, every one of these guitars I pull up is like, wow. <laughs> This is a, another one that just literally arrived in our shop today, along with the uh, large sound hole OMS that we took a look at uh, just a little bit earlier. This is a 00 12 fret coupe model from Dana. It's a coupe cutaway. Uh, this is a DB Signature Deluxe guitar, which we can kind of talk about what all that means. Let's take a look at this top real quick here, Hondra. We've got a beautiful, beautiful bear claw Italian spruce top and you can see how blonde that is with really nice figure in there as well great looking soundboard on this guitar the the DB signature deluxe package kind of implies that wood herringbone around the top of the guitar which you can see there more commonly you would find the DB signature and DB signature deluxe guitars bound in koa but I thought Hey, we're doing koa, a gorgeous set of koa on the back and sides. So let's switch it up a little bit. We switched the uh, the binding material material all the way around on this guitar to coca bolo. You can see that that nice subtly red but very rich colored binding material. There was some beautiful grain as well. Very interesting and and just great looking binding. That binding goes around the body around the neck here as well as around this beautiful headstock very nice like that diamond and arrow inlay right in the center of the headstock there of course mother of pearl logo all the way up top there very very clean and crisp those are the uh, gold waverleys with the snake wood buttons i want to look at this back one more time there just wonderfully figured back set boy oh boy that's beautiful Beautiful, beautiful. Oh, we didn't even look at the neck. Fiddleback mahogany neck because, hey, why not? <laughs> really high figure to that uh, mahogany neck there. Just a nice touch. Very nice. Again, a vibrant, shimmering, loud sound out of this guitar. It's just a little 12 fret double O, and this thing is just pumping, pumping sound out of it.
great harmonics in there. Wow. Folks, if you, if you look at where the bridge sits on this guitar, you can see it's right kind of in the widest point of those lower bouts down here. And when you have that, that X brace sort of kicked this way and the bridge kicked way back this way, that, that gives tremendous control and influence over how this top moves and vibrates. And you can hear, back, what's uh Nice present and very well defined low end out of this guitar. S stays crisp all the way down to those low registers. That's that's awesome. Yeah, that's a just a, a bunch of great wood there put together the right way. That's, I gotta tell you, I was a little, for, for a lot of my guitar playing career, I've been a little gun shy about uh, Koa back and side guitars, but I gotta tell you, just even in the past couple of months here, some of the Koa guitars that we've had in here have really uh, opened my eyes to what they can do and what they can be, which oftentimes is an, is an awful lot of guitar. And we all know that Koa is just absolutely gorgeous to look at, but I'll tell you, in the hands of folks like, you know, Dana Bourgeois and Kevin Ryan and some of these other makers that, that do really well with Koa, man, this is just lovely, lovely stuff. That's one I could get real comfortable with without a, a whole lot of convincing. Beautiful. Folks, we're going to keep moving. I'd love to know, uh, are folks headed out of town for the holidays? Are you staying at home and having people over at your house? Are you having any fam jams, as my friend uh, Tony Policastro would call it? Getting together with the family, pulling out a, a couple guitars or couple instruments, whatever it can be, uh, harmonica, accordion, whatever you got. You making any music, making any noise with the family or friends? Tell us all about it. We'd love to hear. We're going to be completely backwards and play the finger style model first with a flat pick. Uh, folks, this is a Santa Cruz fingerstyle model and one that I had a lot of fun kind of putting together, sort of uh, designing on paper at least with, uh, with Carolyn there at Santa Cruz Guitars. Um, customized in all sorts of different ways. This is uh, perhaps the furthest thing, <laughs> furthest fingerstyle model away from the standard fingerstyle model that they make. And just for reference, the regular standard finger style model that they make would be a western red cedar top with East Indian rosewood back and sides. And uh, if you followed our channel for any amount of time at all, you've probably seen we've done a bunch of different variations of different woods, different, all sorts of different things that we've done with the finger style models. It's one of my favorite sort of platforms from Santa Cruz uh, on which to start to kind of create an instrument. With this instrument, we uh, did away with the standard cutaway that would be, uh, you know, typical to the finger style model. Uh, so this is a non-cutaway guitar. Uh, we went the polar, polar opposite different direction than the uh, western red cedar that would be normal. We did uh, Adirondack red spruce on this guitar. Let's take a look at that there, Hondro. 
gorgeous and just super consistent. A little bit wider grain Adirondack top on this. Let's see if we can look at it this way. Very nice uh, wide grain orientation, but super, super clean. And as I said, super consistent all the way down, all the way across. It's really nice red spruce top. Back and sides of this are old growth straight grain Honduran mahogany. That is just dead perfect mahogany right there. Very consistent, very straight, very quarter sawn. <laughs> Great looking stuff. The, uh, the guitar is bound in koa. You can see that koa binding on, on the body there. You can also see the matching koa back strip. Very figured. Lots of dimension in the uh, figuring and grain of that wood. We also have got the, the uh, koa heel cap back here. We've got the koa rosette, if we can get close enough to show you. There she is. Great golden color, and you can see that koa going around the fingerboard as well. The blue purfling that is standard to the finger style model, which you can see right around the top there. We extended onto the face of the fingerboard, which is subtle, not a, not a super loud detail. And also onto the face of the headstock. Just barely there. This is the exact same kind of, not the exact same because I have Brazilian rosewood binding on mine, but that, that blue purfling is the same uh, way that we did it on the finger style model that Santa Cruz was gracious enough to build for me a couple of years ago. Um, I just love that, that, again, subtle blue detail both on the top and then kind of extending that across the full face of the guitar, perfectly coordinating everything. Um, they absolutely knock it out every time, don't they? This guitar also differs um, under the hood from the standard model. The standard FS model would be a tapered brace guitar in terms of how they voice and shape the bracing. Um, what I've done to a few of the finger style models that we've ordered, including the one, the mahogany one they built me, was had scallop braces put in. Uh, these are also Adirondack spruce braces that have all been attached with hot hide glue. So you're talking light bracing, stiff bracing, with um, with the hot hide glue that over time is really going to sort of let you fully realize the potential of what all these woods are supposed to be doing in the first place because that, that glue gets very hard over time, harder than standard, you know, white glue. So it's... Uh, it's not something that you're going to experience necessarily day one out of the guitar, but I, I think just looking at the um, the potential of what the guitar can be, getting it built with hide glue or animal protein glue is always going to give you a little bit of an edge, I think. That's, that's one guy's opinion, so take it or leave it. Tex Haynes asked what the neck profile is like on the Santa Cruz guitars, and does it change? Uh, the, yeah, that's a great question, Tex. Um, yes, it can. Uh, for example, uh, the OMs, the uh, the Double O, and the Style One that I played, they have uh, kind of a soft V profile uh, to the the rear of their neck. The Finger Style model is a totally different can of worms. This is almost what I would describe as a D shaped neck. So it's it's almost got. On the immediate back side, you know, exact opposite of the face of the fingerboard on the back of the neck, it's got an almost slightly flat feel before it kind of curves off to those shoulders and makes its way around to the edge of the fingerboard there. No V profile whatsoever on, on the finger style model. Um, the finger style model, including this one, also comes standard with a wide 1 and 13 16 nut. Now, you can order this guitar in whatever nut width you want, whatever bridge spacing you want. Uh, I stuck with the standard wider 1 and 13 16 nut here, uh, and we also upped the spacing down here at the bridge to 2 and 5 16 on this guitar, which is something we kind of tend to do on... Um, a lot of finger style, uh, and specifically the finger style model from Santa Cruz. So, great question. And to follow that up, um, when Santa Cruz lists their tops as European spruce, where is that typically from? Germany, Italy? Um, it, it can be from anywhere. That's another really good question. Um, not, not Santa Cruz, but Dana Bourgeois um, years ago told me, if, if you want us to just pick the best 
piece of European spruce for whatever guitar. Don't order a German spruce. Don't order Italian spruce. Don't order. Tell us you want European spruce and tell us you want the best possible example, whether that's for a finger style guitar, something that you want to be you know, super versatile or something that's meant for very heavy flat picking. We can kind of pick and choose from that. Um, when you when you simply say Italian spruce or German spruce, they're sticking to Italian spruce or German spruce, um, which means um, for this guitar, well, this is an Adirondack spruce top, so this doesn't really apply, but um, basically meaning they're allowed to kind of pick on their own parameters, not based on what's the species of spruce or the name of the spruce or whatever. I hope that that explanation made sense. I don't know if that came out coherent at all. Um, where is it from? Somewhere in Europe. Um, specifically, they probably know where it's from. Um, quite honestly, some dealers I've noticed are... Um, they don't ask as many questions as some other dealers, like where did it come from, how old is it, all, all that kind of stuff. And sometimes it's important, sometimes ultimately what the guitar sounds like as a guitar, not in individual pieces of wood, really is actually the important part, but that's a good question. And we're actually going to play this guitar now. As I said, we're going to play the finger style model a little bit first with the flat pick here, just because it, it, especially having the, the Adirondack spruce top on this one, really, it, it can belt it. foolish to have two of the same models with the same back and side woods because I, man, that is an awesome sound. should also mention we did uh, Brazilian rosewood on the face of the headstock, the fingerboard here, as well as on the bridge, um, because why not, right? That's some sustain for mahogany and, and Addy, man. That's that's good stuff. Great wood combination there. We are now getting into the extra big dogs here. And I don't mean physically speaking.
folks, I just picked up a absolutely mesmerizing Dana Bourgeois Style 45 OMS. Uh, we uh, took a look at, a, at a, another OMS just a little bit earlier. This is a, a kind of a different, different context a little bit here. Being a, um, a 45 style guitar, uh, that sort of implies that the really just top selection of tone woods were used uh, in, in this guitar. And the, the tone and character would, would certainly confirm that. <laughs> So what we've got here, Hondro, is a incredible, incredible Italian spruce top here. Very blonde in color, again, very tight grain. You can see tons of that medullary ray. I'm trying to get rid of this reflection, folks. Bear with me. Lots of medullary ray, just, man, a lot of dimension to a blonde spruce top. That's really cool. Back and sides are a lovely set, gorgeous set, in fact, of Brazilian rosewood. Really gorgeous stuff. Take a look at the detail on that back strip. Got that really nice power shell right in the center and all that detail right around it. And being a 45 style guitar, you can see that purfling, the shell purfling on the back of the guitar, on the sides all the way down of course on the top which we just saw a moment ago got the fingerboard extension there you've got the uh, abalone on the rosette going around the sound hole you can see they snuck in some inlays on the wings of the bridge there really well coordinated ebony belly bridge and even down on the tail wedge if we can get light on it there Ooh, somewhere there she blows. You can see all that beautiful shell work around the uh, box tail wedge there. My buddy Todd there at Bourgeois does, as I understand, the majority of this work, this binding and purfling work. And I, I tell you this, the, the man is a genius <laughs> when it comes to doing this work. I don't know if I've seen anybody do a 45 style as clean as what these folks do up in up in Maine there and it's not all about the inlay as I said we've got some absolutely incredible woods here the uh, the OMS again is the 12th red orchestra model from Dana um, a common misconception because these are often kind of referred to as 12 fret triple O guitars a common misconception is that this is a short scale guitar. It is not, in fact, Bourgeois does not even make a short scale version of this guitar. Uh, just to be clear, this is a 25 and a half inch scale length from the nut to the saddle here. So it's, and, and you kind of hear how lively and, and, and again, how much kind of roar the guitar has. And it has almost a similar mid range to the, uh, the Adirondack and Madagascar OMS that we played earlier. This one just seems to have some extra bounciness and uh, shimmer to the sound. Though it's got a little more reverb to it than the uh, than the large sound hole guitar we played. Man, that's a great sound, though. I'm a sustained junkie, folks, so if you, if you just see me sitting here staring off into the distance listening to sustain, just give me a minute, I'll, I'll get back with you.
it's got some serious stuff happening. I, I hope that these mics are doing even 50% justice of what this is about. That's, that's all right stuff. As Kramer would say, that's all right. <laughs> She rings. She rings good. Got a couple for you. Sure. Um, this is a cool one. Colin Logan asked a hard-hitting question. What is your favorite logo in the guitar world? Oh, dang. And try not to let the brand oh. of the guitar actually associate. Is Daisy you know? Rock an option? <laughs> Man, that's a really... Who was... Who, tell me who that was. Colin Logan. Colin Logan. Boy, oh, boy. Um... I'll tell you one that I that I find to be really powerful um, is is Jim Olson's logo. Just that strong O right in the middle of the the you know headstock, not in the middle, top top of the middle of the headstock. Uh, that's an awfully powerful look uh, to me. I love the font. Um, I, I've always really admired that look. Um, dang. Oh man, uh, I, I'm not gonna sit here and and moan to myself. L let's let's go with Olson for now until I say otherwise. <laughs> I love Froggy Bottoms headstock too, though. You know that squared oh, off. Frog. Yeah, with the frog inlay on it. Especially if you guys have ever seen the ones that um, I think Glenn Carson does them, if I'm not mistaken. The uh, the etching, or the uh, the kind of engraving within the mother of pearl or whatever the shell type is. Uh, those engraved ones, Google that somebody, engraved Froggy Bottom logo. I think it's Glenn Carson that, that does those for him. Uh, those are super freaking cool. A lot of detail. I really like the Santa Cruz ones, just the simplicity of sometimes just no fret markers. Sure. No fret dots, just the logo, right, the 12th fret. I'll tell you, um, I, like I, I mean, the, the Santa Cruz guitar they made me with that FS headstock, it's almost... Almost just like this. Again, not with the same binding, but um, switch that angle for me there, Hondra. Uh, I mean, if that's not a powerful headstock, I mean, just some, somebody no find logo. me. <laughs> Ex exactly. I love it, yeah. Um, that's powerful there, if you ask me. If you have the, of course, we, we do have the logo down here at the, at the fingerboard. Don't, don't forget that, but... If you've got the courage to make a guitar of this level and you're not dying to write your name all over the headstock, I mean, more power to you. That's, that's confidence and something I respect. Speaking of good logos and good headstocks. Oh, here. No, we can't look at the back yet. <clears throat> uh, we've got... I said we're getting to the the extra heavyweight hitters here folks is it worth quitting my job and fleeing to Mexico I mean do you get to take that guitar I say yes yeah. <laughs> you get the Brazilian and come with me well come we can just busk on the street with these <laughs> incredibly expensive guitars busking with ryan's for sandwich money <laughs> you got awesome. a ryan got a sandwich what else do you need man well, it's, it's, it's about right folks um we're getting into something that i've been anticipating for a long time i'm not not gonna not gonna lie to you this is the first of two um eddie's guitars 50th anniversary kevin ryan guitars um we've uh We've had the opportunity to do um, a, a couple of runs, not not with Ryan specifically, but just in general of uh, very special 50th anniversary guitars. I know uh, Granville upstairs did a, a, a couple of runs actually with Taylor, those Koa Taylors that we had made for our 50th anniversary. I think, um, who else have we worked with? We did the Ernie Ball Ernie run, Ball. electric guitar run. Uh, w was Dunnable one of them that we did? Um, so, Am I thinking of the right? Actually, I, th I think so. Wasn't it like a, a dark glitter finish or something yeah, like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we got some of the bases, I thought, yeah. that were the, the, the 50th anniversary. Um, anyway, um, 
Ed Putney, uh, our boss, um, this year has been in the guitar slinging industry for 50 years. Um, and we think that's a pretty important milestone. And we reached out to some of our favorite luthiers to have uh, some commemorative guitars made. Um, obviously, we're cutting it very close here at the end of the year. And, and we did just get these Ryan guitars. And I'm so glad that we were able to get these both in officially in the 50th anniversary year uh, for our shop here. Um, the first guitar that I've got here is a Paradiso Grand Concert. So this is kind of the the, the full size, but a little bit smaller body, Grand Concert body from, uh, from Kevin Ryan there. Um, to say that we pulled out all the stops on these guitars would be a shame of an understatement. Uh, because I, I'll tell you, we, we spent some, some time between Kevin Amilcar uh, at, at Ryan Guitars and myself. We spent some time and some Facebook, not Facebook, FaceTime hours <laughs> selecting these woods and making sure that we had them exactly the way that we wanted them. And, and man, the attention to detail that has gone into these two instruments we're about to show you is um exactly the reason why I love having the job that I have is you get to um, sort of collaborate with these people that not only you're friends with but they build things that literally inspire you not only as a musician but as a human being uh, and then when you actually get this in your hands uh, something that, that you know you've kind of had a part of um, you know conceiving um, it's it's incredibly special stuff, and, and I'm, I'm very proud of this guitar, even though I had absolutely no hand in physically making it. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and say I'm proud of it anyway. Um, Ed, uh, our boss, was very anxious to see these when he arrived. Um, he is not usually a guy that's um, at a loss for words, but I, I could almost see a tear come to his eye when we were pulling these things out. He was so blown away by um, not only what these guitars are, but also quite honestly what they represent, you know, for him, for our store, for all of us. Um, and uh, if you folks caught our unboxing that we just posted, was that yesterday, last yesterday. night, yeah, yesterday yeah. evening? If you, if you caught that unboxing, um, I mentioned this in the unboxing, and I just want to mention it again. Neither of these guitars that we had made have any physical um, reference to Eddie's guitars, to 50th anniversary. There, there's no sound hole label. There's no 12th fret inlay that says, congratulations on 50 years. Um, no, nothing, nothing like that. We, we wanted to celebrate in a very special way without having a bunch of I don't want to use the word gaudy, but I'm going to use the word gaudy, stuff like that. Um, and we built these the way that, that I would want to own a guitar, um, whether it had anything to do with an anniversary or a store or not, you know, whatever. So uh, just reiterating that for whatever it's worth. We're going to take a look at these tone woods now. <laughs> Folks, what we have here is an incredible example of Moonglow Submersion Redwood. This is very old redwood. This is uh, a submersion um, or sinker redwood, meaning it was found in a river in Northern California, if I understand correctly, quite some time ago. It's hard, hard to know exactly how long um, these logs spent underwater, but I would say it was some amount of time for sure. You can just see the, the contrast and how dark it is kind of out towards the, uh, the edges and how kind of nice and light it is there in the center. Really dramatic looking top there. The back and sides of this one are a downright miraculous set of, of the, uh, the tree mahogany. Uh, you can, let's get a little bit closer there, just get it in its full glory. I'm sorry for the reflections. We're, we'll try to minimize that, but you can just see how incredibly defined. It almost looks like a string of, uh, um, what, what's that? Barbed wire <laughs> kind of right in the center there at the waist and just how defined it becomes down there at the lower bout as well. Just unbelievably quilted wood here, just so three-dimensional. Man, you can just see the, <laughs> the movement. Um, as I said, we spent um, a great deal of time over FaceTime 
um, with the folks at Ryan making sure we were picking the right sets for these two guitars. And uh, I have no doubt whatsoever that we made the absolute right decisions, of course, with a lot of help from Amilcar and Kevin there at, at, at Ryan Guitars. But um, while we've got it on this angle, I'll just show you kind of the, all, all the details. The fingerboard of this guitar uh, has the Arts and Crafts Rose fingerboard inlay, and I'm just not going to lie to you, this is my favorite inlay that the folks at Ryan offer, just exquisite stuff. Um, it's detailed in all the right ways, but without being too much, at least in my opinion. I, I just think it's a wonderful theme. Uh, it's it's pretty cool because the roses sort of fall on the, you know, you got the first fret, your third, your fifth, your seventh. You can kind of see the leaves and even up here, the, the rising sun. It all follows the position markers on the fingerboard, which it, it actually, believe it or not, it took me a little while to realize that. Well, the well, first time I saw this, obviously, <laughs> I know now, but first time I saw this, I was like, holy cow, he's matching that up with the fret markers. That's that's pretty darn clever. Um uh, we also have that matching arts and crafts uh, rosette. The wood inset in the rosette there is uh, Brazilian rosewood. You can see all those matching, you know, leaves and shapes from the fingerboard inlay. Everything coordinates perfectly, even all the way down on the bridge there. You can see it's totally purfled in blue power shell and also has those little hints uh, of the shapes and the in the wings of the bridge there and even on the tail wedge of the guitar we've got a little bit of decoration down there with the uh with those shapes down there in the tail wedge uh the the, the bridge the fingerboard the headstock and the binding theme on this guitar are all uh done in ebony in fact let's just take a quick look at that headstock speaking of powerful headstocks that is absolutely one of them can, if you look real close, if we can focus that closely, you can see the R there, the logo, is done in blue power. If you look even closer, there's a perimeter around the blue power in mother of pearl. That's called micro pearl, so it's literally mother of pearl lining blue power shell. <laughs> of course, you've got the blue power lining the headstock itself, which goes down. Uh, get that out of the way. You can see that going down the face of the fingerboard all the way down, even on the sides here, sides of the fingerboard, the sides of the headstock, you can see that really colorful shell all the way up on both sides of that as well, even on the bottom side. So the, the rodents and insects can appreciate some, some nice shell work while you're playing guitar. Uh, even on the back side of the headstock, you can see that matching matching theme there. Man, that's awesome. That would make a really great front of the headstock, too, if you ask me. That's really cool. So you have the Cosmic Goto 510 tuning machines with the black buttons. And uh, this guitar is just quite literally perfect. It's such a, a thick and rich sound that just keeps rolling out of it. Just fantastic.
What do you think, Andrew? I love it. Mexico or no? Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Man. That is like a, a smoky, mysterious, moody sounding guitar. So much happening in the sound there. Wow. We're not going to spoil ourselves too much. We're going to, we do need to keep moving because, um, believe it or not, we do have to go home at some point, which might seem crazy. Wow. Yeah, that one's making waves in the chat. <laughs> boy, oh boy, if it's not, then. We've all got problems. Speaking of waves, I think we'll make some more. Why not? Let's do it. Folks, this is number two of our Eddie's Guitars 50th anniversary. Um, guitars from, from my, my friends there at Kevin Ryan. <laughs> this is a Nightingale Grand Soloist. This is just a little bit bigger guitar than the Paradiso that we had just played. And what we've done with this guitar, um, the, the folks at Ryan have been sitting on some, some really, really old Engelman spruce for, for quite some time. In fact, Amilcar there at Ryan Guitars um, built himself uh, a, a, a Ryan guitar out of this Engelman spruce. And numerous times he has told me. I, I just, he just can't believe how amazing this wood sounds, how quickly it responds, um, especially for finger style stuff. Uh, he kind of mentioned this is, this is stiffer than usual Engelman, being the age that it is, the figure that it has, it's, it's unique wood for sure. Um, and for, I, I don't know the exact reasons behind this, honestly, there doesn't seem to be a lot of this stuff out there or a lot left or however you want to say it. This is just terribly unique wood um, and and like all the woods on the Paradiso that we just played this is not stuff that is used in normal everyday regular guitars this is kind of reserved for the next level ultra top end uh, which is very much so what what these guys are but uh, what we've got let's take a closer look here Andy we've got just an incredible Incredibly figure. Look at the flame in in this uh, Engelman spruce here, and how consistent it is all the way across the top. There, it's it's almost like a, a Les Paul top, <laughs> absolute best case scenario. Uh, so figured though, and just a gorgeous color. It's you know a contrast of colors, I should say, because you've got the golden um, against the the super blonde, just depending on what angle you're looking at it from. And and man, this just just awesome 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 it's hard to believe that this came out of a a tree covered with bark and you know all that stuff at some point back and sides no slouch either one probably one of the most flamey sets of brazilian rosewood i've ever seen i, I gotta tell you this might be one of the nicest sets i've ever seen if not the nicest set we pulled this out and uh, one of the guys at the shop here goes, man, that's, that's one of the best looking sets of walnut I've ever seen. I said, guess again, buddy boy, that's not walnut, that's Brazilian rosewood. <laughs> and then, then he almost lost it, realizing what he was looking at and the rarity uh, of just the dimension and color and tonality and personality of this wood. Uh, it is all there. Um, the dressings on this guitar are are virtually identical to the uh, the Paradiso that we just took a look at. You can see we've got the arts and crafts uh, fingerboard inlay, rose fingerboard inlay. We won't go super long into this because it is the same stuff as the guitar we just looked at. We've got that same matching rosette with the Brazilian rosewood inset and those arts and crafts uh, rose shapes in there. Really cool. Signature grade guitar, so you do have that that. Uh, you know, blue power shell on the side panels of the guitar, as well as the back panels. We have that matching little touch on the heel cap. 
we have the matching touch on the tail wedge as well. If we can get it to focus. There she blows. Again, just look at the figuring in that wood and again how it moves. How three-dimensional that is. Just incredible. Take a look here super quick while we're here. Let me get you out of the way. Set matching uh, theme on the back of the headstock again. Again, the, pretty much the exact same appointments all the way around. Just a different body style and very different tone woods compared to the Paradiso that we had just played. And, and you can hear, it, it's, it's absolutely a, a result of these woods. Uh, increased mid-range, increased presence on the top end. The, uh, the Paradiso had, I don't want to call it a scooped mid-range, but definitely had a little bit less, less in the mid department there, where this one's definitely punching out the mids more. A little bit more in the trebles as well, which are just very sweet. sound man you had to pick one of those two which do you pick are you asking or is somebody else someone asking? was asking yeah oh i don't think there's there's no way i could make a a knee jerk call on that right now i i, I hate to sound indecisive <laughs> but He's got, you know, just a, a huge amount of money hold, burning a hole in, in their pocket. Both of them would be the right answer because they're they're so different. It, it would be, I did flip a coin and then I'd still try to end up with both of them somehow. <laughs> ultimately. Not only do I not know what to say, I don't know what to play on this thing because nothing I know is worthy. <laughs> you know any Kid Rock? What's that? You know any Kid Rock? I know all Kid Rock. The whole library. <laughs> If 
that hadn't been obvious before this, Hondro, all of the instrumental tunes that I play are actually adaptations of Kid Rock songs. <laughs> really? Okay, I didn't know that. <laughs> trust that folks can tell when we're joking and when we're not joking so with that said um this might actually be i might take this home tonight (laughs) not to keep just to have a a little affair with (laughs) i don't think i'd mind that at all the wayne johnson from sutherland sydney australia um Saying that the uh, detailed comments and playing demonstration very appreciated. Awesome. Thank you very much. Uh, we really appreciate you joining us here. So you're... We need somebody to listen to us. So you're, you're just as much a part of this as we are. <laughs> James Bartell has asked if you're a blue chip user. Exclusively. Exclusively. I, I say that like anybody cares. Uh, no, I, I, I used to really be into natural tortoise shell picks, and I, uh, gentlemen that I've dealt with for um, a while um, very graciously made me some, couldn't sell them to me legally, so I didn't buy them from him, but he was gracious en- enough to uh, make me a couple tortoise shell picks. I, I just really got um, kind of attached to that feel and that sound. Um, and there were a couple of times that I thought I actually had lost one or both of, of those picks. Unfortunately, I never lost them. I found them eventually. But um, it, it stressed me out enough that I, I thought I can't just keep one of these picks in my back pocket because I'd sure be disappointed if I lost it. So I, uh, it was actually when I was out at the, um, the Winfield uh, Bluegrass Festival. Boy, that's probably been five years ago now with, with James from Bourgeois. Uh, I went up to the blue chip uh, booth that they had there, and Matt was just as gracious as he could possibly be uh, and, and kind of let me take a look at what they had, and I, I ended up matching up. Um, the pick that I had was almost the exact same size and shape as this Kenny Smith. Uh, is this a 60? I can almost worn off yeah Kenny Smith 60 is very similar to the the picks that uh, I was used to playing so uh long story short yes I enjoy blue chip picks very much especially the Kenny Smith 60 it's a kind of a little bit smaller rounder pick but does the job very well for me and folks we are now at the end of the line we're um we're at the end of our day here, so we're not going to linger very long, but we do have one more guitar to share with you from our recent arrivals here. This is a Froggy Bottom Model K. If you know anything about me, you know I'm a fan of the Froggy Bottom Model K in a very, very big way. Um, this example, let's take a look at this top, Andro, has an incredible Carpathian spruce top. We're looking at a bunch of great blondes today. A couple brunettes too, but, but some really nice blondes, i got to say. Nice Carpathian spruce there. Very tight grain. Again, we're just, we're just talking consistent high-end stuff here. Um, you're not going to find anything silly or goofy or off or wrong in, in this level. So uh, very nice spruce. You can see the, the body is bound in a very nice curly maple. We've got a gorgeous set of sinker mahogany on the back and sides of this guitar. It's beautiful wood here. You can see the uh, contrast in grain is um, upped a little bit in the sinker redwood, I'm sorry, sinker redwood, sinker mahogany uh, woods here. Just a little more contrast and kind of interesting grain patterns in this wood. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. A nice little maple tail wedge there. Cool stuff. Let's take a look at this headstock. Very nice. Again, this is this is certainly among my favorite for the, your your headstock logo, a little frog design up there done in abalone. Nice, uh, nice set of Madagascar rosewood on the veneer of the headstock, and this is actually the the first Model K uh, with these woods that we've had made with a cutaway. This has a, a really nice, very usable. Um, Venetian cutaway on this guitar. Uh, nice access up the top here. I'm 
talk about a guitar that sounds like just the quintessential acoustic guitar. I don't care if you're playing finger style, doing folk stuff, playing jazz, ripping out the biggest G chord in the world. This thing just sounds like a great, well-balanced acoustic guitar. It's just what it's supposed to sound like, if you ask me. Mr. Uh, Will Ackerman is pretty well known for playing the Froggy Bottom Model K. That's definitely one of the models he's known for playing. And see, even though it's a, a, a pretty good sized guitar, uh, with with again not not the deepest body in the world, but some some pretty good body depth there, the thing is just absolutely responsive to any little thing that you put into it. Excellent balance, excellent sustain. You know what this reminds me of, like big time. I'm, I'm just just dawning on me. I didn't I didn't prepare this. Those earliest uh, like er, early '70s America records. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly what this guitar sounds like. They they were not playing froggy bottoms. I think they're playing D28s or D18s maybe. But yeah. It just has that that nostalgic acoustic guitar sound. It's that Jim Croce kind of vibe to it too. Folks, we have um, as much as I would love to sit here and play this guitar all night amongst everything else on the wall. We have reached the end of our day here, and we are now uh, going beyond the end of our day even. So certainly appreciate you spending all of this time with us um we uh appreciate the just the ability to share these guitars with with uh with you folks in general so thank you for always watching and contributing to the conversation um we hope you all have a very merry christmas a very happy holiday like i said i believe this is going to be the last live stream that we do this year i don't think that we're going to be doing anything next week but you better believe that we're going to be prepared going into 2022 to share some uh, some more great guitars with you, whether it's on the acoustic or the electric end. We hope you join us. And uh, as always, we really appreciate you being here. Any final thoughts there, Andro? Um, Anything sorry, I need I to know? Sorry, I got distracted because people were talking about the Shire. And, and the Shire? Just, uh, yeah. <laughs> Are you having Lord of the Rings talk while we're supposed to be live streaming? is referring to to down under sydney the shire <laughs> <laughs> nice nice but yeah um got a lot of just people saying thanks for the great playing thanks for you know demoing Thank these you guitars all. for everyone they love hearing them good streams good content good people all around boy oh boy well it's all all all, all positive uh, vibes around here i'm cool with that if we're gonna end on a high note if nobody's complaining about anything we yeah. better bail now while we're <laughs> while we're still good and we got the water singing to us now, too. Oh, yeah. Folks, thank you so much. Have an absolutely wonderful holiday. We appreciate you a lot. Happy New Year. If we don't see you, we're not going to. So take care. Thanks.